Welcome to the Saturday on me on the vibe. I'm joined by Rob Weir of Tigers of Pantan. The snare drum uh, fell away from me um, to, to my left uh, and smashed a it smashed a window uh, like like a glass kind of a, like a glass door because um, this 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 was a um, it, it was a back room but it had glass doors out to the garden and I wasn't popular <clears throat> although it was a complete accident you know um, and I don't think I was don't think I was asked back I, I wasn't a drummer anymore um, <laughs> after... <laughs> I'll I'll leave that. first band which I put together uh, was a band called Trick we were we were Spinal Tap um, you know years before Spinal <laughs> Tap was even thought of it was uh, our singer was a punk who sang in pyjamas the drummer was a rhythm and blues skiffle um, kind of drummer whose drum kit separated from him um, it's about three songs in uh, he, he he would sit and play on, on his drum seat, but the kit would actually move forward. So after about four or five songs, we had to stop stop the show and, and assemble his drum kit around him again <laughs> so, so, so he could carry on. So I'm here with uh, Rob Weir of the Tigers of Pantang. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, uh, I like to kind of start things off by having a look at those early years of a musician, you know, it shapes who they're going to go on and be. So what was that thing for you that made you go, you know, I want to be a musician, I want to be a, guitar a guitarist? Did you have a moment? Um, <clears throat> okay, so early beginnings, I wasn't a guitar player. Um, I started off uh, as a drummer. Mm -hmm. Um and it, um, we were rehearsing in my um, school friend's grandparents' back room as I was playing the drums. Um, I, I can even tell you the song. We were rehearsing Goodbye to Jane by Slade. Um, so we were, when was that? 70, hmm, 70. Oh, we'll have to Google this now. 75, maybe 74, 75, can't remember. Um, and we'd finished, and I got up, get a drink or something or other, and uh, the snare drum uh, fell away from me um, to, to my left uh, and smashed a, it smashed a window, uh, like, like a glass, kind of a, like a glass door. Um, because this, this, this was a, um, it, it was a back room, but it had glass doors out to the garden. Um, and I wasn't popular. Um, although it was a complete accident, you know, um, and I don't think I was, don't think I was asked back. So, um, I, uh, what, what happened after that? Um, I, 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 I wasn't a drummer anymore. Um, <laughs> I think so, I'll, I'll leave that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, and I think I did. I think we did a couple of rehearsals because uh, I fancied myself as a singer, um, <laughs> and um, and then I thought, do you know what it is? It's probably easier to hide behind a guitar of of some description. Um, so um, I could play. I, I I could kind of play guitar um, from the age of about eleven, twelve. My dad one day appeared with um, a, a Spanish guitar, nylon strung Spanish guitar, which was um, painted in um, army camouflage colours, hand painted. Um, and I started playing it left handed and I thought, this is awful. I, 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 how do people play guitar? It, it's almost impossible. Of course, not realising that I'm right-handed. So when I finally spun it around, um, a couple of days later, I guess, uh, and thought, ah, this feels a bit more comfortable. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, um, assembled myself in the lounge next to the lovely uh, stereo radiogram that we had, uh, put the needle in the groove and 
started to try and find a, a note on the neck of the guitar that you know, that was somewhere near a no, one of the notes on, you know, gosh, what an Elvis Presley song or, mm. um, you know, a, 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 I'm just trying to think, uh, early status quo or, or, or indeed Slade or something like that. Um, and and it, it kind of went from there, all, all self-taught, um, still... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit like a doctor. I'm still practicing. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think is I think as a guitar player, I don't think you ever. I don't think you should. If if you accomplished absolutely everything, and it's a bit like a band's career as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if then you're kind of saying to yourself and, and to everybody else, I can't get any better. I can't go any further. But, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, I, I've I've gone as far as I can. Um, so I, I'm. I'm certainly a long way off of being accomplished, um, you know. Um, but uh, you know, God loves a try, and um, God loves me because uh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been very lucky in as much as um, there, you know, there's been uh, amazing guitar players um, that have um, jumped on the Tigers. Um, train journey uh, and jumped off again and um maybe i got a bit a bit lazy because these guys were so good um you know i i didn't you know i just needed to do what i needed to do you know write songs and you know knock out a few chords i'm very much old school so I, I, i'm not a I hate whittle guitar playing um mm. and you know 300 notes when really three would do um, and you just have to look at the great guitar players, you know, of of, of you know of our time, uh, you know, Paul Kossoff and um, uh, Jimmy Page, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, even Jimi Hendrix, you know, he he, he didn't whittle, you know, he he he, he played, you know, uh, some some lovely tasteful blues guitar, um, and it. <laughs> It just the, the whittlers for me uh, are, are people that you know. If, if if I sat in my bedroom, room, wh- wherever, shed, um, and practiced um, scales endlessly, I dare say I, I could whittle. But I've got no interest in that whatsoever because that's that's rightly or wrongly. Sorry, all all you whittlers out there, but it's just. It's 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 my view and my perception. Um, you know, I, I just I, I, I like to listen to a guitar solo and think, "Ooh, that's a bit nice." You know, yeah, that, I, think, that, I think it's got a bit more character, isn't it? You yeah, know, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. It, it is the old adage: "Less is more." It really is, mm. uh, and, and I, I've always I've always thought that. I'm just mm. going to move the camera a little bit further along there so I can reach behind me and I've got a rather nice glass of Chardonnay here. Uh, cheers to all the listeners and the viewers. <laughs> um, I think growing up, everybody has that, that first band or, or first musician that they really connect with. It's like their, their band, isn't it? Did you have one in particular for you that was like, this is my band? Um, uh... No, not really. No, um, I, uh, I, I. Was I, there a few? Was there like just a few in circulation for you that you were like, "This is my kind of thing." I've got two sisters, which are ten and twelve years older than me. I mean, by the time I was eight, they'd kind of left home. But from <laughs> from a very tender age, um, you know, I, I, coming out of out of their their. their um, mono dance set record players, you know, playing 45s, you know, six or seven of them all stacked up waiting to be dropped down to play. Um, uh, was w- it, the house was just filled with music. Um, although my my dad was a was a doctor and, uh, and a surgeon, he um, was one heck of a piano player. Um, although if you asked him if he could play piano, he would say, Oh, a little bit, you know, I, I can play a bit by ear, but you could, you could, you know, he, he could hear a song on the radio and, and then play it. Um, and so the story goes, um, when he was at King's College in Dublin, um, uh, as a medical, um, 
you know, student, um, he had his own little dance band and, and he used to play um, uh, trumpet and saxophone and, uh, uh, you know, uh, direct, m musical director and all that kind of stuff. So the, the, there's definitely a bit of music in the, in the family. Um, but, you know, my sisters, that there would be Elvis, there would be Little Richard, there would be the Beatles, there would be Cliff Richard, there would be um, all sorts, you know, the Beatles and the Stones and all sorts of stuff you know, belting out of their rooms um, in competition, you know, with each other. And at, at, at a young age, um, as indeed we all are, whether it's music or whether it's technology or whether it's mathemat mathematics or English, you know, kids are sponges and, and, and mm. they take in all this information um, subconsciously, probably a lot of the time. Um, but if it's... <laughs> If it's the path that you want to take, then it it, it stores itself um, for, for 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 use in uh, uh, potential use in later life, uh, which it certainly did with me. Um, uh, you know, and I, I have fantastic memories of, of listening to all that 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 cacophony of, of of different styles and all that kind of stuff. And I've got quite a quite a wide uh, eclectic taste in uh, you know in music from um you know uh, yehudi men uh, um now i want to get his name wrong oh my god yehudi um he was a, he was a gypsy violin player yehudi men 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 i got oh god i can't remember his surname that's 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 wrong that's gonna give that's gonna give people a laugh You'll have to Google that. Uh, you know, and, and I, I had um, actually went out and bought one of his one of his early records. Um, uh, and absolutely tremendous. Um, from that to you know Ramstein uh, and, and everything in between. You know, um, um, I, oh, I love a bit of the Rams, the, the old Ramsteins, uh, a bit of Duhast. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. clever, clever, clever written songs. And um, I, I, you've got to tip your hat off to those boys because, um, A, they're not singing in English, which is the international language, of course. Uh, they're singing in German. Uh, and, you know, they, they, they've, they've taken on, they've taken, taken on all, the, all the biggies uh, and, and kind of, you know, won the battle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, <laughs> songs are well-crafted. Um, and the, the diction in the vocals is just stupendous it's just absolutely awesome um mm. which gives it which gives the music its character really um but um i, I just think they're a very clever entertaining musical act um you know uh, you if yeah you go for the music you go there for the volume uh, for the vibe uh, and one hell of a show um, you know, tremendous. Anyway, I digress. So, um, of course, the uh, the Tigers of Pantang were formed around that kind of new wave of Br British heavy metal scene that was kind of kicking off. Well, we, 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 we of course, uh, um, I started the band in seventy eight, so mm. it wasn't written about until seventy nine uh, in the Sounds Music paper. So I think it was late 77, probably. Uh, and just prior to Tigers, um, my first my first band, um, I've only ever been in two bands, really. Um, um, a couple of projects, but um, two, two actual kind of performing bands. And my first band, which I put together, uh, was a band called Trick. Mm. Um, now... We're talking days before, well, long, long, long before, um, you know, you could whip your phone out and take a video or, um, you know, uh, Wi-Fi technology or text messaging or computers or, and I, got, I just wish somebody um, had taken some um, Cine 8 um, film of Trick because we were, we were we were Spinal Tap, um, you know, years before Spinal <laughs> Tap was even thought of. It was uh, our singer was a punk who sang in pajamas. Um, <laughs> I was I, I was I was knocking out, you know, uh, um, guitarists in the style of Tony Iommi and Ted Nugent and Angus Young. Mm -hmm. um, the drummer was a rhythm and blues skiffle um, kind of drummer whose drum kit separated from him. Um, it's about three songs in 
uh, he he would sit and play on, on his drum seat, but the kit would actually move forward. So after about four or five songs, we had to stop stop the show and, and assemble his drum kit around him again <laughs> so he could carry on. And the, ba- the, the bass player looked like he, he, he had a walk-on part in um, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, and and he was into Crusaders and um, all that kind of funky bass playing. And so, so you've got a funky bass player, a punk singer, a heavy metal guitar player, a rhythm blues drummer, but we were playing Motorhead by Motorhead. We were playing... Bastille Day by Rush. We will play. <laughs> That'd be an interesting sound. Oh my goodness! I just <laughs> wish I, I had that on film. We, on you know, we, we would have two hundred and fifty pound every week on on the You Been For Aben show. Uh, it, were, it must have been hilarious. Um, but I tell you what, we, we did all right. Uh, we, you know, we were just playing the pubs and mm. as you as you did back then, uh, pubs and, and working men's clubs, and you know they were always full. Um, uh yes my goodness um and and then it it kind of that was a good grounding because it it kind of became a bit more serious after that and uh, and when i I put the advert in uh, a local newspaper to form the tigers um it's you know i'd had uh, half a dozen half a dozen songs written um which um all, all all appear on uh wildcat um uh, yeah, and, and the advert kind of said, um, bass player wanted really to jam, you know, songs of the day and original material. Um, and within about two hours of putting an advert in, in, in the local press, um, the phone rang and my, my mum shouting up the stairs, um, it, it's somebody for you. Um, so, and, and of course, it, it, was, uh, it was Richard Laws, a.k.a. Rocky. Uh, the Tigers' original bass player, and he said, "Oh, I'm I'm at, I'm at Newcastle University, and on the course I'm on, there's a lad that plays drums. Uh, should I bring him along to the, you know?" And I said, "Absolutely!" So uh, instantly we were a three piece, and all we needed was a singer, um, and you know w- we recruited a singer quite quickly, and off we went, and that's how it all started. Yeah, did did you have a feeling? around that whole new wave of British heavy metal, like that there was something special happening. Of course, at the forefront of that, you were looking at, you know, the Iron Maidens and the Judas Priest, but there were so many other bands around at that time. Well, there were. There were. You're quite right. And um, you've mentioned Judas Priest in the same kind of breath as Iron Maiden. So for me... It was a bit before, uh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, although it wasn't classified, you had uh, the old wave of British heavy metal, Mm. Which, which were Judas Priest, which were Black Sabbath, which were Led Zeppelin, which were Deep Purple, which were Uriah Heep, uh, which were Thin Lizzy, mm. um, uh, and, and, all, and all those bands that, that were established probably 10, 12, and so many more years before. Mm. Then all of a sudden in 78, 79, you have, you have this kind of, I'm going to use the word explosion, um, of of new new rock heavy metal acts coming through um it, the press got a hold of it uh, it was pigeonholed because people love people love pigeonholes people love um genres and so, subgenres of music uh because they feel safe and that they can go to that particular pigeonhole and pick out oh that that's athletic rock that's speed metal that's deathcore grinds um toenail you know, clamping, um, whatever, you know, uh, I'll, I'll play some of that now. So thankfully when I started, there were only a few, um, <laughs> only a few, uh, kind of classifications, if you like, uh, which all had sub classifications. Um, um, and, uh, new wave of British heavy metal was, um, was born out of heavy metal music. Um, you know, and new bands on the like, like on the block, as it were. You know, uh, of which of of which I consider there were four to start with, uh, which were um, Tigers, uh, Iron Maiden, um, Saxon, and Def Leppard. Mm. We, we, we were the four that that were written about initially uh, in the Sounds newspaper, um, and I think we kind of forced open the floodgates for an awful lot more bands. You know to to, to come through and 
uh, ride on the wave with us as, as you like, you know, or, or they all got on the kind of new wave of British heavy metal surfboard and, and, and off we went, you know, crashing across the waves. Mm. Of course, you briefly touched on uh, the debut album Wildcat there. Of course, that was very well received. And then just a year later, you know, after John Sykes and uh, John Deverell joined, um, you then went on and recorded Spellbound as well. I mean, it, that that in just such a short space of time doing two albums and then, of course, replacing a singer, that, that's a lot to deal with. What was that period like for you guys? Was it just a bit crazy or, or did, were you just kind of rolling with it? No, I think we were kind of rolling with it, to be fair. Um, yes, it was crazy, but I don't think there wasn't time to stop and think. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you know, we were signed to a, um, a, a major record label, but probably the biggest one because MCA, um, MCA's parent company was CIC Universal, mm-hmm. um, which of course is, um, you know, Universal Pictures, which mm-hmm. make all the blockbuster films, uh, still do to this day. Uh, so they were probably the richest record company. So we, we, we were, we were very lucky, you know. Uh, we were signed, Leonard Skinner was signed to them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, Aspira Gyra, Poco. There was lo- there was lots of kind of big acts in the day. Um, uh, they of course were signed to the American branch. We were signed to the UK branch. Um, and then of course, about sixteen, eighteen months after we were signed, um, they signed Diamondhead because mm. uh, Diamondhead didn't have a record deal. Um, but. Uh, you know, uh, 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 everything kind of happens for for a reason. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were just kind of caught up in the moment, as it were. Um, there was, you know, we, we, we recorded Wildcat. We went out and did, we played Reading in 1980 uh, to 72,000 people with White Snake headlining um, on on White on the A stage on White Snake's um, headlining stage. Um, about ten days later, we went out and did a. Um, we did the Wildcats um, headline tour, uh, which was our first headline tour. Um, so bearing in mind, 80, March in 80, we, we, we set off um, well, our first show was at Cardiff Top Rank, opening up for Magnum. We did 20, 20 dates, 20 shows with Magnum, opening up for them. We then jumped onto the... Uh, chronologically, I'm not sure I'm going to get this right, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we did, and I'm sure somebody can uh, look it up and sort it out. Sure, the fans we, will know in the comments. Below. Yeah, absolutely. We, <laughs> we did. Uh, I'm sure the next thing we did, um, and this was just like just days off in between. Uh, we did the Love Drive tour with the Scorpions uh, in all the big halls in the UK. We then did On Through the Night with Def Leppard. Um, we then did the second half of the Wheels of Steel tour with Saxon. Uh, that was three weeks. Um, we did some shows with Iron Maiden, um, and then we re- we went into the studio in the summer and recorded Wildcat, uh, and then came out and did our own headline tour, um, playing two thousand capacity venues, w- which were um, top ranks and Mayfairs and um, Locarnos, and they were all owned by Mecca, who uh, if I. I, I um, Mecca used to uh, run a huge bingo um, empire and sponsor Miss World. Right. <laughs> uh, so Me- Mecca, Mecca were all, all all powerful, all sing, all dancing, and, and had all these venues um, virtually in every single city in the UK. Mm. Um, that, you know, all standing um, kind of rock venue, stroke music venue, stroke rock disco nightclub you know um they, they were the forerunners to what we call academies these days mm. did you find it particularly different i mean i find a lot of bands when you're replacing a singer there's always that question isn't there i mean you, you guys have now done it a couple of times but um you know it's, it's the voice of the band it's it i imagine that can be potentially a difficult thing to do <laughs> It can be, and, and quite daunting. But again, um, because we'd had uh, a number 13 album in the charts, and, and we're talking the British charts here, not not, 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 a, not a, a dedicated rock chart. Mm. Um, so, you know, we, went, we, we slid in at 13, um, you know, with Gloria Gaynor, uh, David Bowie, Michael Jackson. A lot you know, of competition. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Either or multi platinum, you know, and, and here's the little old Tigers of Pantang from Whitley Bay, um, you know, in there with uh, with a hit album. Um, so that showed us a few things. That showed us that our songwriting was credible. Mm. Um, we 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 got the image right, um, uh, and it, it was definitely all firing on 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 you know on six cylinders for us. So losing our first singer um, when we put the advert in uh, again in the music press, um, you know, for a new singer. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there was no shortage of uh, of people um, wanting to step up to the plate and uh, in, in having a go, you know. Um, and of course, uh, um, before we did Reading nineteen eighty, it was decided um, in in powers slightly higher than me um, that uh, um, we should have a two. It should be a two guitar player band rather than a one guitar player band. And the reasoning behind that was because when we'd been out touring with Scorpions, two guitar players, Saxon, two guitar players, Iron Maiden, two guitar players, Def Leppard, two guitar players. Um, that it was a bigger, it was a bigger sound altogether, um, and uh, just after we'd finished, literally after the dust had settled on the last note um, of Wildcat, um, this meeting was uh, was taking place with uh, between our agent and our management, um, and uh, an advert was. Was was placed and we held auditions at Tower Bridge Studios in London, um, and there were two two stand two guitar players that were you know head and shoulders above all the other fantastic. Hey, everybody was was amazing. Everybody was you know could play. That's for sure. But like with everything, you know, sometimes there are you know a, a couple of winners, um, and one of course was John Sykes, and the other was Steve Mann, um, who of course. Um, went on to play in Lionheart and um, MSG and uh, currently still with Michael Shanker um, and had a career producing, you know, uh, in a studio in Germany. So uh, thankfully Steve did, did uh, you know, has, has had a good career in music. Um, lucky enough to meet up with him last year at Stone Dead Festival um, mm-hmm. and, and, and we had a bit uh, a bit reminiscent, a bit crack, which is always nice. Um and uh, yeah, John, 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 obviously, you know, got the job. Um, we set about straight away um, writing. Uh, John and I, uh, we only ever wrote one song together, which was "Take It." Um, oddly enough, but we we wrote separately, albeit probably two miles apart. Um, brought our songs to the to the Tigers' table, um, and uh, Spellbound was half mine, half his. Crazy Nights was half mine, half his, um, with John Deverell and, and Rocky doing vocals. Um, and, of course, Brian uh, w- working wonders on the drums. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it was obviously when somebody has to come up with an idea so we, so you can all work on it. Um, but um, so we all, it was a band effort, uh, as, as indeed, you know, it is right, right up to... to you know, to, to today, um, everybody writes. Um, but in order to write, somebody has to come up with a core idea. You know, you've got to, you've got to have something to, to, to write on or, or to mm. add to, if you like. Um, so whether that's me or whether that's Francesco at the moment, um, you know, like it was back then when it was me and, you know, uh, and, and, and John Sykes. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... Uh, um, I've, I've rubbed it on that much. I've completely forgotten the original question. <laughs> what, what was what was your initial feeling around having that that potential of a dual guitarist? Was that was that good for you? I mean, I, I imagine that you, there, there would be some people that might feel a bit like, oh, you know, hang on a minute. I'm I'm the guitarist in this band. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm the only guitar player in this village. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, do you know that probably that that the, the probably there was probably a bit of that, um, but um, 
there comes a time when you have to admit defeat. Uh, and listening to John's guitar playing, um, you know, the, 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 the lad was six foot tall, long blonde hair, drop dead gorgeous, um, you know, uh, uh, and played like a, uh, you know, like like Thor, uh, you know, uh, uh, it just unbelievable. Um, and I, I did think to myself, I'm going to have to open my game here. I, I'm going to have to. Um, I'm going to have to go in that room and practice practice scales for hours on end. No, no. But then, <clears throat> the, then, then the red wine came out, and so and the white <laughs> wine. So I, I didn't. Um, <laughs> but um, no, it. <sighs> We, we, we shared guitar solos. Um, John's were always better than mine. Um, but, you know, you, you, yeah, it, it's, it, it worked. It mm. worked. It, and it worked really, well, really, really well. John, um, I still speak to him now. Uh, we're still good friends. Um, I've tried to get him back out on the road, trying to get his material out, um, you, you know, which is now nearly 10 years old, I suppose. Mm. Um which I, I don't even I don't think you'll ever see the light of day. Unfortunately, um, I, I, yeah, uh, we, we shared a, when we toured around the world. We, we shared a room together uh, and got up to all sorts of silly things. Um, but he's he's you know he'll forever be in my heart. Uh, it just he's just a he's a lovely lad. He really is. Um, of course, at the the turn of the millennia, you you decided to bring back the Tigers of the of Pang Tang. Hmm. Um, but of course, this time is kind of all new faces. It, w- was that, uh, like what was behind that decision for you, for you thinking, you know, now's the right time to... to so bring- the year before, 1980, I, um, I, I kind of walked away from the music business in 87. Uh, sold hmm. everything, uh, had enough. Uh, I'd be, after the Tigers, I'd been involved in a couple of projects, um, I'd recorded albums. Uh, one was a project called Sergeant. One was a project called Tiger Tiger. Um, I'd, I'd recorded stuff. Um, we even were Sergeant. I'd, I'd gone down to London and got a um, a great record deal with CBS. Um, but um, for whatever reason, uh, which I won't go into because it's all in my book, yeah. which is coming out at the coming out at the end of the year. Little plug there um, called Tiger Band Tales. Um, uh, I just was fed up, and I just thought, you know, <laughs> what what have you got to do in the music industry to get on? Right. Um, so, yeah. so I, I I kind of gave in and just um, you know um, walked away from it all. Um, I still went to shows, which I don't know whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, because whenever I went to whenever I went to a, a, you know a gig, um, when I went to see Thunder for the, on their very first tour, uh, the Little Angels on their very first tour. Um, I just, you know, oh God, I so much wanted to be on the stage doing it. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, I still, I still collected LPs. Um, and I was, you know, when, when the CD kind of revolution came around, I, I, I thought, no, I'm not buying CDs. I'm not buying, right. I'll buy CDs. Um, <clears throat> um, so, I, you know, I started collecting, um, you know, and, and because everybody was releasing stuff on CDs and, oh, uh, mm-hmm. God. Um, and then in 99, out of the blue, I got a phone call saying, did I want to be part of a 20th uh, anniversary reunion of the Tigers? Uh, and we were, we'd been asked if we would play uh, the Wacken Festival in Germany. So uh, it took me a nanosecond to say yes. Um, I'll uh, I'll do that. Uh, and then I thought to myself, well, I haven't got any guitars, or I haven't I haven't played seriously for um, eighty seven, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety twelve years. Mm-hmm. Um, so went out and had to buy a couple of guitars. Had to buy um, you know some amps and some speakers, um, some stage clothes, um, and some bike clips. Um, and uh, <clears throat> when we finally went out to, you think your bike clips, that's a strange thing to, but it isn't really, and I'll tell you why. Because when we went out to, uh, when we were on the plane, going across to, um, what, four rehearsals? Four rehearsals. Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> went out to, to Germany. Um, 
And as as I was on the second plane ride from Heathrow to Hamburg, uh, I was told that we were headlining um, the wow. next night because we went on the Thursday. We were headlining on the Friday. Uh, Sa- Saxon on before us, Dockin on before us, Hammerfall on before us. Uh, and I thought, oh, my God. No pressure. Uh, yeah, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> um, hence the bike clips. Uh, because uh, I thought to myself, bike clips are a great addition to my stage clothes. Um, clipping at the bottom of my ankles to hold all the um, personal wastage that's going to come out of me because I was shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we walked out at one o'clock in the morning to 22,000 people, wow. um, not having played for 12 years. And the, you know, it, it does, the ticker tape runs through, through the, just the top of, across the top of your eyebrows inside your cranium thinking, can you still do this? Do you, mm. do, do you, do you still, are you going to be all right doing this? Are you going to remember the chords? Uh, are you going to be able to play the guitar solos? Are you going to be, what's going on? Why are you doing this? You idiot. <laughs> you were safe hanging <laughs> in your garden shed yeah. about 48 hours ago, you know, um, you know, doing your crochet. Why are you, why are you putting yourself through this? <laughs> There's only so many pairs of socks you can crochet. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, and it's when I came off stage, um, I was, I just thought to myself, oh. Great! I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to. I need a bit more of this. I absolutely loved it. Um, seriously, seriously loved it. Um, and and uh, yeah, that that was it. I, I decided that I was going to have to put the tigers back together again in some shape or form. Um, all, all, all all the original members all had lives mm. doing you know uh, other stuff and um, couldn't be part of the. The, the new crusade. So um, I just set about recruiting um, new guys, new members. And you know the stigma to this day. I, I, I don't know what. Maybe you're guilty of this. I don't know. And maybe you won't admit right. to it. But when I do when I, when I do interviews with uh, magazines and uh, radio shows, and um, when people review our albums, yes. they'll say Rob Weir only original remaining member of the Tigers. <laughs> and I've seen ab- this, yeah. It absolutely grates the <laughs> jump out of me. I won't swear because this is going out on YouTube. Um, I was going to say shit, but I won't because uh, that's a swear word. So I'll... I'll uh, <laughs> Why, you know, but when you read a review of Whitesnake, they never say David no. Coverdale, only remaining member. <laughs> they never say Mick Box, only no. remaining member. Of you. They never say, you know, I, I think to myself, why, why are you picking on us? You know, have you got, it, it's poor journalism for me. It, what, there is, have you got nothing, there is a have thing. Have you got nothing else to say? You, you, there, there are, you know, there are ways, there are certain ways to circumnavigate this. Um, the, 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 I mean, you know, the Tigers have now been going for 24 years. Mm. Uh, the original band was together for four, maybe four and a half. So, um, you know, Jack, uh, our singer, um, has been in the band 20 years. Mm. Craig's been with me 24 years, uh, the drummer. Um Oh, God, it's, it's it, it, you know, we, 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 I'm very, very grateful and, and very humbled and very honoured with the monocle, mm. uh, the moniker, I should say, a monocle something you wear, with a moniker. Um, <laughs> I, I need to get one of those. I can't, I can't fancy a monocle, actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, with a new wave of British heavy metal, because it's it's helped, it's served us, you mm. know, in in great stead. Um, but you can't just keep playing Wildcat. Um, oh, well, you could. You, you, uh, obviously, you could. Um, but I don't want to. Uh, mm. The creativity is just ridiculous, uh, you know, in this band. Um, and, you know, the, the albums that we've produced recently, in recent years, I should say, um, have all, you know, have sold really well. They've the, the, the all come to great acclaim. Very well um, received. I mean, I was going to mention this, you know, um, particularly the the latest, well, prior to your upcoming release, um, mm. Bloodlines. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a great record. 
you know i think i think you guys are the the current iteration that you have now i mean i don't know whether i'm going to make a bold claim but you know i i feel that you know i associate what you guys are today as tigers of pain i mean i don't you know as you as you mentioned there you know you guys have been doing this now for a longer period than what the the original iteration were doing absolutely um yeah. But I, I do know what you mean with the only founding, only member left, or something. Oh my goodness! I've, I've had this with a because I've I've interviewed a couple of people where they they may be classed as the only one left, like uh, Roger O from Fog Hat recently, and um, a guy called Fito Della Paro who's in Canned Heat. Um, they don't say they don't say Biff, only original remaining member no. of Saxon. They don't say <laughs> they don't say Brian Tatler, only original member of Diamond. <laughs> and I just I get so, there so some, for some reason I don't know why. I mean I'm, I'm yeah, yeah it, it, there, there is this thing with particular bands, mm. and I, I do understand. Like I have seen in comments before as well, where it's I mean how how would you respond to this when when somebody goes oh well it's not. That's not really Tigers of Pantang. That's not really this. When when they, you, 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 I mean, I'm sure you've re- seen that kind of thing before. I mean, I've I, seen I, it with I, other. I people. have, I have, and, and the, the 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 response would be, is it really Deep Purple? Yeah. Is it is it really White Snake? Mm. Is it really Saxon? Is it really? I mean, how, how many more bands do you want? You know, d- for, for me to to reel off. ACDC, I, I, is it really ACDC? Yeah. yeah. Is it? I mean, you know, uh, but just because there's one original remaining member who was the songwriter, mm. that's the important thing. If if I if if I was the original remaining member that played a triangle, <laughs> and, and and you know, and, and and never never wrote a note, I would kind of get it. <laughs> But somebody that actually wrote the songs, mm. steered the ship in in the direction that, that that it needs to go, year after year after year, then I think that's fairly credible. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's fairly credible. So, um, sorry, journalists out there, but <laughs> if you are reviewing anything in the future, please don't say only original remaining member because it's so old hat. Um, it's as old as this hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I completely understand your frustration. Um, of course, uh, you have the up and coming live album, uh, Live Blood, yeah. coming out on uh, April 26th, which is a career spanning. Um, we felt the time was right. Uh, we, we, we carefully chose the venue. We went down the, the day before. It was the, the Patriot uh, in Crumlin in Wales, mm. uh, which we played many times. And we went down the day before, uh, ran through the set, um, got everything mic'd up, make sure everything was working, um, did a bit of a test, uh, came out, and absolutely nailed it on the night. Um, mm. So this is this. this <laughs> there's lots of live albums out there which might not be quite live. Uh, there might just be a slight. We've kept the triangle, but we've recorded everything else again, uh, and we're pretending it's live. Um, <clears throat> there might be one or two of those albums circulating um, with fam- famous names above them. Ours, I can tell you genuinely, hand on heart, me heart's mm. here because uh, I can feel it kind of beating. Because um, <clears throat> the, the batteries, I've just put new batteries in. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is absolutely live. What, what you hear, there's there's only two guitars, and when one guitar plays a guitar solo, uh, the other guitar is playing rhythm, and and that's that. You won't hear anything else. Um, you know, every, everything was. It is uh, as it is. And do you know what? It was. Um, we sent it across to Chu Madsen, who mixed the Bloodlines album, um, mm. and what a great job he's made of of mixing. Uh, mixing the album and you know giving us the same sounds you know that 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 we we achieved on the night uh, you know in in that rock club um, absolutely tremendous so you won't hear a lake you know a complete sea lake of people you know that we've borrowed from you know Kiss Alive three or Kiss Alive twenty seven or, or whatever you know the, the audience that you hear are, are the people that were actually there. Uh, which, which is quite nice. So um, 
you know, it's uh, it, 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 it is. Um, <clears throat> we're very, very pleased with it. Mm. I, I just think it, it it perfectly sums up what you guys are about. You know, it has the energy, it has that kind of classic uh, metal kind of sound that you guys are about. Um, I imagine that you were getting a lot of requests for a live album. You know, it, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as I say, it is career spanning. You know, uh, mm. the album opens with Euthanasia, which is from Wildcat. Um, closes with Love Potion number nine. Um, the CD, because of time constraints, mm. is seventy eight minutes. The L, well, there's a, it's a double. There's a double LP, mm. albeit it's two LPs in one sleeve. Um, which we we elected to go for that for well primarily for cost if mm. if we're being completely honest, but also for packaging and for postage and you, you've got to consider all these things um, because what's happened? What's happened to the Royal Mail? I mean, <laughs> a first class stamp one pound twenty seven or one pound twenty five. What's all that about? <laughs> Bloody hell! I, I was putting. <laughs> I was posting letters with Penny Blacks on them. I mean, come on, dear me. Uh, anyway, um, oh god, um, yeah. So, so that on the on the LP, uh, there's 88 minutes. So there are there are bonus tracks on on the on the, obviously on the four sides um, of of the of the, the record. Um, and although. Uh, I haven't actually got a CD in my hand or a record yet. Um, I, I believe they're on the way from Germany. Um, uh, very much looking forward to uh, well to playing the CD. I can't play the record because I haven't got a record player. <gasps> but um, I, I'm, I'm sure I, I can go around to my sons and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play we'll play it at his <laughs> house because it is stereo's worth about twenty grand, whereas mine's probably worth about. 20 pence because I got the charity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, of course, you know, with it being a live album, do you, do you have a particular favorite song that you like to play live? Do, is there, or is that like trying to pick a child? Like yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it, it is really. I, I mean, I just, every song has its own merit. Every song has mm. its own, uh, has its own fours. Um, I, I, oh gosh, yeah, Dif a very difficult one. If I was absolutely pressed, and 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 you know, um, yeah, it probably would be Susie smiles because yeah. what, what, whenever we play that, um, the place just goes bananas. You know, the mm. the mosh pit forms, and and we're not a mosh pit band really, yeah. and it always amuses me when you know when, when we play something like that, and a mosh pit forms, and I think. Oh my word! You know, uh, uh, look at that. Is uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I always want to give a guitar to, to you know to my tech and want to go down and join them. You know, and, and <laughs> it looks it, it just looks it looks so much fun. It looks brilliant. Um, but yeah, uh, pro pro probably that. But I mean, oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, there's there's so many. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can imagine. You know, it's you still get a buzz from that that reaction. I mean, I, I think a band feeds off that that energy, don't they? That the crowd definitely, can. definitely. And we want we really the, the back of our minds. We wanted to make the live album. So, you know, w when you put the headphones on, um, or you put it on the car, and you buy yourself or whatever. Well, maybe not in the car because you might crash. Let, 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 let's have the setting in, in, in you know, pr probably where you are, because that looks pretty cool, uh, with a candle, and you, and you put the cans on, uh, and you play it, and you close your eyes, you could actually be there. That, that's mm. that's kind of h how we sort of wanted everybody to perceive it, really. Um, mm. You know, and, and you the, the, the vibe jumps jumps out the headphones, you know, and, and, and messes with your, with your hair and your, and your brain. <laughs> no, no, I completely agree. Um, <laughs> uh, a question that I always like to, to finish on, I ask every guest yeah. that comes yeah. on. Um, if you could tour with one band or musician from the past and one from the present, who would they be? Uh, the past probably would be 
the past, the past, the past. Um, probably ACDC with Bud Scott. Mm. Um, probably. I remember, a quick little story, I remember being at the Mayfair. Uh, they did two nights. The first night was cancelled. Did it Def Leppard were opening up for them? Mm. The first night was cancelled because I was with the Tigers manager at the time, um, and he worked for BBC Radio Newcastle, and he had his own rock show called Bedrock. And he, on, on behalf of Bedrock, he was interviewing Angus Young and Bon Scott. Mm. And I accompanied him, um, as I did on, on those, um, because we, 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 he'd got some great interviews, and, and I've you know met a lot of great, fantastic musicians and people back then. Um, and we were actually in the Mayfair waiting for um, Bon Scott to come, you know, and meet us and take us to the dressing room. Mm. And the place went black and you could smell burning. Um, and there was an, it was an electrical fire and the place just mm. went up. Um, and uh, all the sprinklers came on and the, the, there was it was there was doubt as to whether the second night was going to take place because the place was it was became a swimming pool. Um, anyway, it did, they managed to dry it like I don't know, scrape the water somewhere and put it in yeah. I don't know buckets or throw it out the window. I don't know what they did with it. Um, but it, that the second night happened, and I was stood with um, with a monitor guy uh, at the side of the stage. So so. I'm at the side of the stage looking across all the Marshall stacks, as it were, okay? Uh, so you've got to picture this. <clears throat> um, so the band are sideways onto me, facing forwards where the audience was, mm. yeah, because I'm around the side. So Bon Scott would sing. He, 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 he did this every number. He sang. When Angus was doing a guitar solo, he walked towards me, because I was stood next to the monitor guy, so he walked towards the monitor desk, walked around the edge, the end of uh, Malcolm's um, Marshall four by twelve stacks, round the back where there was a, the, where it was his personal rudy, obviously, uh, who had a torch. He had a couple of glugs of neat whiskey. He did five press ups, like proper press ups. Got back up. Wow. Walked back round, picked up the mic, and then carried on. And he did that. He he drank the whole bottle of whiskey in the sh within within the, the, the you know the uh, the confines of the show, with five press ups e every time. Wow! Uh, absolute machine, <laughs> Un unbelievable. And, and I, I would have loved to have just kind of been in his company and just mm. chewed the fat with him, and you know. Um, but I'd like to have done it now with with with, with what yeah. I've seen in the last forty years, rather than brand new, because my questions would have been shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've often said this. I was like, oh, you know, if I if I could have had such and such a thing, but with the knowledge I know now, <laughs> mm. absolutely. And, and and now touring now, um, somebody present. Mm. Uh, gosh. Um, I, hmm, hmm. it's so many. Gosh, so many. M maybe I, I, if I've got a club, maybe Ramstein, maybe somebody mm. like that. Just, just to have a look at the mechanics of of, of how it all how works it goes, and yeah. what why they have you know twenty trucks on the road and and, and all that. You know, just because it, it all interests me. You know, and and the mm. show and just just getting to know the boys and, you know, going out for a pizza and, yeah, and a glass of wine and just kind of, you know, chewing it all over, as it were. Um, mm. um, I know what you mean with the, with the live show thing. I mean, I've always had that curiosity with, like, an Iron Maiden or something because it's just such a uh, an extraordinary live show. You think, you know, how can you take that on the road? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Kiss as well, you know, Kiss mm, have got yeah. an amazing show. Um we were doing Barcelona Rock uh, two or three years ago. Uh, Kiss were on the next day. Um, mm. We did that with Ozzy and Judas Priest, and oh gosh, it, it was great. It was a great year. Um, we 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 were waiting for our shuttle back to the hotel, 
Mm. And there were four guys stood, and they just looked like um, four guys from Men in Black, you know, perfectly <laughs> pressed dark suits, white shirts, black ties, and, and the earpiece, with, with, you know, with a, with a coil uh, yeah, kind yeah. of... And I, and I said to the guy um, who, who was organising the shuttles, I said, oh, I said, they, they, they look a bit uh, serious. And so, you know, he said, that's KISS security. No. And I said, "Kiss the kiss." I said, "Oh, oh I, said, I said they don't play till tomorrow." He says, "No." He says they've come in now. Um, he says, and they're they're just checking out all the vantage points uh, just to make sure that the band's safe. And you know, if a- anybody, you know, could bump them off, um, then no. they're that they're on it. Um, and there were two huge. Just as we were talking, there were two um, forty-foot trailers that just coming from um, Barcelona port. Um, which had the KISS backline and the KISS show, um, or all the hydraulics for the platforms and that, that, that had all, that would all come in for the, like for the next day, as it were. Um, so just, yeah, just, I just find it dead interesting, you know, all that, all that kind of mm. stuff. Um, and as I say, you know, maybe, maybe over a, you know, uh, over a, a glass of wine and a pizza, then some of the boys in, 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 you know, Ramstein or KISS or, yeah. Judas Priest, that they might not say, "Are you the only original remaining member?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every oh look, it's Rob Weir, the only original <laughs> member. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, quite. Yeah, and I would, I, I would position myself. You know, maybe a Judas Priest or whatever, <laughs> you know, next to Ian Hill, saying, "Yeah, I'll sit next to you because aren't you the only original remaining member of Judas Priest?" <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what he'd say. Maybe it was like we're, we're the only original members. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> I, I did spend a I did spend a fantastic night um, uh, chatting to uh, Ken Downing, KK Downing. Mm. Uh, we, we, we were playing um, a festival out in Sweden together, um, and we flew on the same flight actually from in um, Manchester out to uh, wherever we flew to in Sweden. Um, uh, w- what a nice fella! I'd uh, never met him before in, in my life, and we were sat sat next to each other in in hotel reception. Uh, and he said, "No, oh, he said because I love the Birmingham accent because I, I, I Magnum, uh, you know, Tony and Bob, and oh god, Tony's gone now, and it's such a shame." Um, Bob, I know Bob will be absolutely lost, absolutely devastated uh, because oh my goodness, we've had touring with them because we opened up for them in eighty. Mm-hmm. And then they opened up for us in eighty one in, wow. in all the city halls. They 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 came on tour with us. Uh, with oh god, such a laugh. Anyway, so so uh, um, KK, he, he's uh, it's just his his lovely brummy accent. You know, all right, a lot the tigers. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, never seen you. You know, I, I, hopefully I can see you tomorrow. I don't I don't know what time we're leaving the hotel now. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting having having him say the Tigers of Pantang in that. He, he was great. Yeah. And he, he's, he's, got, he's got a boy you a drink. And, and I said, uh, uh, no, I said, that's very kind. Because he bought everybody a drink at the bar. I yeah. said, no, that's, that's very kind. This is because um, I'm going to buy a bottle. So and I think I said I said I think that's that's probably pushing me luck with you. So um, I'll, I'll just I'll buy my own bottle. But thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but he bought everybody else in the Tigers a drink. Wow! Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. What a nice, oh, nice, nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Um, well, thank you very much for joining me, Rob. And um, of course, thank for those you, out there that that want to uh, pre-order the the brand new uh, live album, Live Blood, uh, you can via the links in the description below. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Out on as we say, April the twenty sixth. Yes, um, out on uh, April twenty sixth. And uh, about a week later, we've got four British shows. So mm. if, 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 if I don't know when this is coming out, but um, we would certainly, I would certainly, as being the only original remaining, <laughs> yes. member, would love to see everybody <laughs> um, come up and say that to me. Um, no, please don't. Um, yeah, we're, uh, the show that the show starts in um, the Continental in Preston. Mm. Um, I think on the. S- Second of May, we play uh, London on the third. We play uh, Merthyr Tidville on the fourth. 
which is my birthday. Oh. Star Wars Day, may the fourth be with you. Yes. Uh, and then, and then uh, we conclude um, at um, in Stoke at the Eleven Club, um, which is a, a Sunday afternoon matinee. So um, I'm looking forward to that. N- never played an afternoon show before. Really? Well, uh, in all these years, never done. Never done. Never done an afternoon show ever. No. Um, so yeah, that'll be interesting. Something new. Well, yeah, it is, and, and apparently it's taking off. Um, there's a I've great heard rock this. club. Yeah, there's I've a heard great a rock club of... up in Newcastle called Trillions. Um, Dave Hills owns it. Um, who's a great friend of mine, who recorded all my guitar tracks uh, for Bloodlines in his studio. Um, mm. and, and he he does matinees. He, he does afternoon shows on a Sunday. Um, mm. t- and, and it's chocker packed. So um, come on, you Stoke people. Let's mm. uh, let, let's be having you. Have let's, nice. let's, let's have, let's have, have it nice it. and full. Where, 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 whereabouts do you hail from? So I am literally down the road from Stone Dead in Newark. Ah, right. Okay. Did you come so, to Stone Dead? Uh, I wasn't available, unfortunately, that that particular year. Not sure. but, um, yeah, okay. My my dad was there, so okay. Okay. <laughs> he got to enjoy the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, if if um, uh, you know if if you're passing, um, yeah. it will it will be nice to uh, to see you. Absolutely. Um, I mean, when you next when you guys are next kind of around the area, I'll, I'll certainly be dropping by. Um, Good. But th- thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate your time. And, thank you, um, sir. No, it's it's been cool. Man.